because I've, I've only I've I've heard of it. I've heard of it referred to, and it seemed it seemed huge. All right. So we were talking about the number of IP addresses that are possibly available for IPv4, which is something like four point two times ten to the power of eight, <laughs> maybe more or less. And AG says. It's probably going to be like Y2K, and and, and um, I haven't gone down that rabbit hole yet, because Paolo says, remind me, what is Y2K? A problem that was, it existed, but you know, we were so freaking prepared that it didn't happen. Yeah, exactly. We were saying, oh, Y2K is fake. No, it wasn't. We were just so freaking prepared. Yeah, because it was, um, it was being tackled as early as the 80s. Yes. And, um, and and the IPv4 to v6 transition is more or less the same thing. Like every computer out there has the capability for IPv6. Yeah, it's as simple as a drag down menu. Yeah, and so it, it just it is I, I guess literally just a matter of um, your uh, ISP implementing it. But as of right now, DHCP seems to be working really well. So, but to answer Paula's question of what the Y2K is. It was before your time. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I pointed actually because wow, it reminded me of how old we are, and the, the, like where Paulus' generation comes from. State. What, what what age were you in 1999? 1999, I was eight. Exactly. Uh, okay. While we were already in the internet by 96. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. I, I, started, I started using the internet in 96. I remember using Edsa Mail. Mm, that's yeah. my first ever internet experience after that when Ensa Mail sucked uh, I started making a Yahoo account uh, so 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 you stuck with your ISP's mail Bef- um, wow what oh no. it's been like, that long yeah no, because like to get because to go from your ISP to Yahoo means you skipped Hotmail no I didn't like Hotmail or like Rocket Mail and the myriad of other mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like all those other things but I didn't like uh, Hotmail, Rocket Mail. I went to Yahoo because it was my preferred search engine. Oh, okay. Because when you go to Yahoo, the website, right, it's complete. Yeah, okay. Because Google is just, it's just a search engine. Yeah. Nothing there. Then but look at me now using everything that is Google. <laughs> but then was Yahoo at the time a search engine or was it still just like a directory of the world? It was a directory, web? but it had a search engine. Yeah, you, but, you searched a directory, more yeah, or less. You search a directory, not unlike Google, which is a web crawler. Uses yeah, web crawlers. Unlike, unlike Google. Unlike Google, who uses which web crawlers. Web crawler. So they return better search results. Not necessarily, which is why they return more search results. Uh, they return more. more search results. More because variations, like, not uh, better. Yeah, because, because um, the better comes from their proprietary secret sauce that... <laughs> Yeah, that looks the at product, your which is pretty much Google's main Alphabet's main product is that well Google. Yeah, Google at the time. Yeah, was search what? Okay, Y two K. No, it's like what? Yeah, I'm I'm still a little, I'm still confused. Apparently, computers I... can compute to the number two thousand. Okay. And by the time the clocks hit uh, after Jan of uh, after December 31, 1999 12 at 11 59 p.m. when it hits at 12 and it hits year, January 1 year 2000 apparently it's a number that the computers cannot or won't be able to not review but like assess to them it's going to be an error a null I right, think. so here's oops I dropped a pen <laughs> that happened last night as well um, so Paolo the, the way a lot of developers used to so 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 we have to think about how developers think, right? Developers are lazy. Okay. And every developer out there, well, to non-developers, you think I'm insulting developers? Developers love that we know this. <laughs> you are lazy, and we thank you for it. <laughs> <laughs> because it makes for convenience. Yeah, anyway, exactly. <laughs> we're going to stray again from the main point. Right, so... Um, and so to and, and so, like, a lot of developers, when they needed to make reference to a date... They would just use the last two digits of the year. Yeah. So 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, and zero, zero. zero, zero. You're back to null. 
is that 2000 or 1900 computer doesn't know the difference hmm and that could lead to a lot of catastrophic failure a myriad of problems like a bank <laughs> seeing that your date is 1990 what's that going to do to interest yeah. rates yeah or 1900 what's that going to do to interest rates if oh. you're counting your if you're computing your interest rate using a computer things like that <laughs> oh gosh yeah and their biggest worry was that uh in power with regard to like the computers used in uh not not oil refineries was that power sta- power generate power stations yeah like okay it's gonna see it's zero zero the computer thinks i don't need to generate power so but the problem well, i'm not so sure with the specifics on with regard to other things but that was trouble so what happened was it during was the literally night, planes are gonna fall out of the sky <laughs> yeah planes are gonna fall out of the sky we're gonna go back to the stone age finance will fall down like business it will, will fall down governments will collapse so basically people will go into panic so basically they were ba- so basically if this came to pass it, for for lack of any better term apocalypse yeah mm. I guess so. Massive chaos and apocalypse. If it really went down. But it, it didn't. didn't. <laughs> because easy. Solve the problem. Yeah, Make they, them they recognize had, that. <laughs> they had... They, they, uh, a lot of smart people recognized the problem very early on. And worked on it. Yeah. And worked on it. Like as early as like Windows 95. Yeah. At the time, you you know you already had the year two thousand. That's why the term that they used to sell Windows ninety five. I can remember it correctly because it was the first time I got Windows ninety five. Was it was quote unquote Y two K compliant? Yeah, that's the term that was running around during that time. And then um, a lot of people, or a lot of there it is again. I'm using words like they and a lot of people. <laughs> um, a lot of IT professionals made a lot of money. Updating, yes. Um, updating companies' databases like and whatnot, software to yeah. be quote Y two K compliant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was pretty much Y two K. Okay, it, it, it's and that's how I see the DHCP problem, IPv six, IPv four. Like, yeah, yeah. It's a problem that's already solved. It's just we need. A massive media uproar to get everybody to of course like a kardashian has to say it or something <laughs> yeah or we have to say that planes are going to fall out of the sky if we run out of ipv4 addresses or again people would be smart uh, i mean when smart people are working on it and get solved right so what's going to happen is we won't even realize that we're now at ipv6 <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well a lot of yeah I yeah see like i mean Right now, computers can switch both ways, but eventually, it's going to be the new standard. Right. Say, that's why the slow phase out of, uh, from, you know, CDs, success, like the slow phase out, it wasn't abrupt. Yeah. Mm. So it won't cause like a major schism <laughs> in the computing world. Like it, um, if you, like it, it, in order for the internet to work, you don't need everybody to shift to IPv6. Yeah. Right? Because that means there will be addresses that's going to be available for IPv4. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, problem solved. Hmm. And if you need, and like, say, IPv4 gets loaded, IPv6 gets loaded. Which is impossible. Hmm. Exactly. But at, for any case... IPv8. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, that's going to be my easy suggestion. But I it's, know, I mean, IPv6 won't. Hmm. This is just, I don't know. It's like, I have the, now that you bring this up, I did want to bring up this uh, little question for you guys, RJ, because I saw this, I forgot if it was either io9 or Lifehacker. They tried to, they pretty much brought up the scenario. What would it need, what would, what would it, what would need to be done in order to destroy the internet? A lot of things. Uh, 
it's easier to just shut down power stations. Like you know, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Like let's just uh, let's just say someone de- let's just say a whole group of people decided they wanted to shut down the internet. You really cut wires. Yeah, you have to start cutting wires. You have to start cutting wires underwater. So you don't need bolt cutters. You need like freaking huge cutters. Yeah, dude. Because those wires are designed to operate under high. Level, uh, high pressure levels because it's underwater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. That's why when you see those boats laying down pipes like thick, not even thigh in circumference, like huge wires being dumped into the water. Depends on whose thigh. Ryback's thigh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> An excess <ex's> thigh. <laughs> oh! <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, the thing about the internet, right, is that a lot of people tend to forget that the internet is an interconnected network of networks. So um, we we have to ask, what does it mean if the internet is broke to, for the internet to be broken? Um, we could make the argument that the internet is broken because China isn't really part of the interconnected network of networks. Okay. Because of all of the massive censorship. Mm. Okay. Does that mean the internet is broken because it isn't a true interconnected network of networks because we aren't exactly connected to them okay then china has its own yeah so and and china has a chinese internet but then yeah so so that so so i'm asking you a question what does it mean for the internet like what is your definition for a broken internet what is my definition for a broken internet hmm the thing that's coming into my mind ra- right now is basically, basically as complete a, as complete a shutdown internet as possible. As in, I try, as in, I attempt to get on and I can't, despite the fact that, in many ways, I should be able to. So, how to kill the internet? Pretty much, which means again, that's that, that's, that's still that that still isn't a. Uh a good enough definition of how what to make the, the internet, internet not is. exist turn off every computer <laughs> <laughs> again that's why that's why my first my first solution was that uh, just you know destroy power stations <laughs> yeah or like like if you because the thing is if you still cut every like wire that's underwater what about the wireless have, no <laughs> People don't understand the, the internet. <laughs> the, the the physical internet. <laughs> yeah, the physical internet is a set of wires. Okay, a crap ton of wires. A crap ton of wires. Right, because um, the I'm oh, sorry. It's like well, what, is your, need, Paolo, what is your understanding of an interconnected network of networks? An internet connected network of networks. An interconnected network of networks. Essentially, an interconnected set of com- an interconnected set of. An interconnected set of date of it begins hardware with C computers and ends with an computer. <laughs> hardware database, but but literally that's just computer with just, more with more hard right, disks. Computers follow, connected follow, follow, to follow, each follow. other. Yeah. <laughs> if if I if I take a file from this computer, yeah, and um. Well, so this computer is connected to this computer okay. through the router upstairs. Okay. These two computers are on a network. Or okay. And the network in this house, yes, is connected to the network in a G's house. Okay. How? <laughs> through a bunch of wires, wires that go through our internet service providers blah blah blah. So in okay. So our two networks are interconnected. Are interconnected. All right. Now, in order for us to get the Facebook.com website, yes, we have to connect to, to another network of computers somewhere in Los Angeles. Cupertino. No, no, no. Cupertino is... Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. So we have to connect to another network in uh, San Francisco. Yeah. And how do we get to connect to the network in San Francisco? No Wires. way we're going to do it wirelessly. <laughs> Wires, well, satellite, I guess, but that's just too wicked expensive and really slow. We that kind of tech isn't readily available and efficient yet, isn't it? It's. I, I would say that it's impossible. <laughs> oh, just the sheer economy will make it impossible. Hmm. 
physics will make it impossible. Oh yeah, because, because the Earth light. Is, yeah, <laughs> gonna earth say, is round. The Earth is round. So uh, good, luck, good luck going to that side of the hemisphere. <laughs> Unless you can bounce between satellites, but again, why you're gonna bring it outer space? So travels farther. Yeah, so. and inherently wireless is always slower. Okay. Yeah. So so there. Um, now, if we were to cut every wire. underground wire or an underwater wire, yeah. So essentially, the quote unquote continents, which is a social construct, but we another podcast. Political. That's another podcast for another time. But so so say you cut every underwater wire, you will have, you will still have an interconnected network of networks within the continents. Within the continents. Or Does for that our case, count as a broken internet? Yeah, for our case, at least the country. Okay. Yeah. Right? So, so does that count as a broken internet if every computer in the Philippines was connected to every other computer in the Philippines? Is that a broken internet? Well, you are not able to... Uh... And assuming that Facebook.com... And assuming that Facebook has a server in the Philippines, Philippines. where that's where we just connect instead of going yeah, all the way to San going Francisco. Instead of going to San Francisco, we have a mirror in the Philippines that has the Facebook website. Yes. And we can get to Facebook.com. We just can't get to the Facebook.com that is everybody else in the world. So, mm-hmm. base, but, so basically, if, it's, if we get to, the Facebook, if you get to Facebook.com here, we're only going to be meeting people in the country online? Yes. I want to say technically the people connected to that mirror. Yeah, yeah. The people connected to that mirror. Because there would there would also be a North America Facebook. Yeah. But then they won't have access to the people in Facebook Europe or whatever. Okay. So is that a broken internet when everybody can still get to Facebook? Just a different Facebook. Or people can still use Google. Just a highly specialized Google. Yeah. <laughs> like highly localized Google. Yeah. And if your answer is that means the internet is broken, then what happens to China? <laughs> Pretty much every country will be China if for that situation you cut yeah, underground. Yeah, everybody becomes China. Now, does that mean that China doesn't have the internet? Hmm. So really, what do so you mean? really, what do we mean by a broken internet? <laughs> That's a really tough question, actually. Hmm? The only thing... No, he's the one asking the question, so what yeah, the then, you know... The, I don't know. It's, it's like, a really good question. It is when really I'm trying question. to think about, like, how to... About, like, broken internet, the thing that's coming to mind is, like, ease of access to all this information, to all the information that we like, currently have access to on, on the click of a... Key. The click of a okay, mouse. So what do you mean to say we broke an internet? Nobody in the planet Earth that has access to an internet can access it. <laughs> because well, when you talk about the ease of a click of a mouse, we had that with Encarta in 1992. Yeah. Hmm. Or whenever the first Encarta like, CD came out. Well, oh, well, because the image I'm getting in my head for that scenario is basically at that stage, we don't have access to a live feed of information anymore. Ah. But, but then, can you still go back at the <laughs> but then, yeah but then again that's China like China does have a quote live feed of information but it's not what Both the rest things. of the world sees hmm. and, and that is functionally agree. having a wire underwater cut for okay. China because it's just so heavily regulated by the Chinese government yeah. so does that mean that China's internet is broken and I do know that where where uh, where these articles are coming from because they had they, there was this thing about these big uh, buildings in the U.S. that are like interconnection buildings mm-hmm. and stuff where they were saying I would take down the internet if you blow one of these up or something. It won't. <laughs> <laughs> Probably for a few days it'll be slow. Yeah, it's going to be slow because <laughs> because the packets will have to just find exactly. another different. The pipes are going to get loaded. Well, yeah. Technically, yeah, the pipes are going to get gonna, loaded. It's going to take a less direct route. Yeah. Right. So, that's the weird thing, right? The only way for there to be no internet is for... Or the only way for there to be a truly broken internet, I think, is if every computer wasn't connected to any other computer. Pretty much back in 1970. Yeah. 
before Arpanet. Yeah, bef- and you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the that's your era of broken internet. That's your no. Oh, we have no internet because it hadn't been invented yet by that British dude, <laughs> by Al Gore. <laughs> so, Paulo, yeah, what is really your definition of what of it? If if that's the case, or did we able to answer your query? Somewhat, yes, because I'm still trying to th- trying to. Th- I don't know. It's like I have an. I only have an image in my head. I don't have. I don't have the. I don't have the words needed to, de- to detail it. Right, so what, what do you mean by? Or so so what is the image that you have? Like somebody, plugging in their computer and and you get an unable to connect on your web browser, and that happens for everybody in the world. <laughs> well, well, let's let's say that scenario. Yeah, that that scenario would be everybody has to everybody in the world has to not have or not 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 be connected to other computers outside of its own local network. Hmm. But then again, if you have like an entire mirror of Wikipedia, which is like what some some remote villages have have, right? Like they just have mm. You know, like somebody W gets the entirety of Wikipedia every week and like brings it to the computer labs in that school that doesn't have a connection to the internet. Is that yeah? Would that would that count as a part of the broken internet? Speaking of broken internet, you, you guys continue. I, yeah, I'll just the internet is the currently rubber. broken. That's why I'm actually looking at it. I'm trying to see how can you actually bro- break the internet, but <laughs> but it's not going to happen anytime soon. And it's not gonna happen instantly. I don't know. It's just it's just like one of those scenarios that I that I just came across one time because I still remember back in like I think it yeah back in when we were in me back when when we were, we went to Miko's farm. I remember he mentioned like some some weird. He mentioned like the with the psychology of ki- of the of the kids the, of kids these days. It's like. They grew up all their lives connect. They basically grew up, up with with the notion of cons- of being connected to the internet easily. Yeah, because we were probably the last generation who grew up without internet. The current generation has no concept of, of an in- things of an internetless of, of world. world. Yeah, they give them a map. They don't know how to read it. I'm pretty sure they won't know how to read a map. And it's not a fault with them. It's just they didn't have the experience of growing up without a map. Yeah. Because, uh, and then to be honest, I don't think it's a bad thing. Okay. Because I never, I, I mean, never blame the system. <laughs> this is my case. Never blame the system. Never blame the, like, the medium. What happens is with those people, because like Miko is saying to Paolo that. Because these days don't have a concept of what the internet is. They're on no, it's a, it's just like I, w- I remember it was related to like we were talking about. It was in relation to us talking about horror mo- like horror monsters, and then something about so he brought up the idea of like this horror monster related to the internet and playing on the fears, of, like the notion that. The kids of this generation didn't didn't grow up with the concept of an internetless world. Okay, so that's that is a statement of a fact. That is a statement of fact. Yeah. Did Miko have a value judgment attached to that? These kids grew up without an internet. I didn't see. I didn't identify one when he was like bringing that an, that example up for the talk for the talk. For, like for the talk with with regards to like that horror monster, okay, because like a lot of and like horror in general because it was October. Okay, yeah, because a lot of people that I've spoken to have this weird like sense of nostalgia, where and well, I, I guess in a lot of ways like uh, this 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 fear, and I, I think it stems from this fear of not being able to understand the world that the future generation will live in um, 
where they view like kids not having experienced floppy disks and like that's sad you know like I mean, kids, that's, that's not sad right like 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 kids well, better will, for them <laughs> no kids will never know a, the ring of a telephone and that's sad you know kids will never know how to read or kids won't know how to read a physical map and that's sad you know a lot of a lot of people that i've spoken to have that general sort of feeling and knowing miko that's probably how he feels I was just trying to elicit that from Paolo. <laughs> that way I wouldn't have to say anything. But um thing is though, the world I, I truly believe that the world is getting better. <laughs> like I don't know what it is about about us human beings um where we always like, hate the younger generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we always hate the younger generation. We always have this idea that the past was better like the good old days was you know the good old days were the best time to be alive before heated and running water before electricity before um the entirety of human thought at the touch of a fingertip before you had computers in your phone yeah. the collective intelligence of humanity yeah like Why is that a bad thing? Right? Yeah. To me, why is that a bad thing? Yeah, it's a great ways time to be alive. For Christ's sake, ways. <laughs> Or open source technologies. Yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's something that, like, I have to... Th- that I grapple with, actually. Because, yes, you do feel that sense of nostalgia for your youth and sort of... Again, the ring of a telephone. A rotary phone, <laughs> you know? No, it's just that, you know, you went all the rows through those crap. And then you see some kid who won't even experience that. And you say, oh, I didn't experience that. Oh, it's a loss. But that, personally, I think, no, it's not. Good yeah. for them. <laughs> we, con- we have to continuously develop human beings. Yes. But then there's like this opposite sort of side, right? Where, like a lot of old people, this is really funny. And... um Uh, yeah, a lot of old people have this, and by old I mean like our parents old, have this idea that kids these days are so good with technology. Because by the time they're three, they know how to navigate an iPad. All of a sudden that means kids these days are really good with technology. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that is retarded <laughs> it means they know how to touch a screen congratulations your apple's bitch <laughs> that means they know which icon to touch which which nice little square picture to touch I like um, when a kid can take apart a computer and put it back together that's when you know a kid is good with technology <laughs> Just like, because somebody knows how to drive fast, that doesn't mean that person is good with cars. Because if you ask them to change the oil, they're like, uh... <laughs> oil change. <laughs> uh, I'm changing oil. You know? I, I just find that really weird because I'm like... It's like a lot of people, a lot of old people. They're like, oh, look, look at that child. He knows how to push the button that gets him to angry birds. Like... And I know how to press gas on the car. <laughs> that doesn't mean I'm good with cars. That means like, I know how to drive. <laughs> Daytona 500. <laughs> Here I come. <laughs> But, um, that sense of nostalgia, especially with technology, is it's just... I guess because we are... One of the defining traits about homo sapiens is we're tool users. <laughs> We're tools and tool users. <laughs> like our buddy that was on TV earlier. What a tool. <laughs> For podcasts and stuff, head on over to channel14.com. <laughs> It's a third world Linux episode. We explain internet to Paolo. <laughs> yeah, but... Seriously, I didn't. I only hear. I've only heard about Y2K, like quite literally, just 
Y2K, Y2K. What is Y2K? The closest, the closest thing. Break the world down. Yes. That yes. <laughs> but it's fun. The internet is fun. Technology is fun. Pushing forward, technology is fun. Although to be honest, I won't make my kid have his own personal phone by the time like sixteen. Sixteen is my threshold. Not even like when he hits high school, I'll give you your own phone. I hope your girlfriend agrees with you. She does. Okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, well, the uh, phone will the give. End of that conversation. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll give phone, but like a feature phone. Okay. Not not a smartphone, smart device. Get a feature phone, not a future phone. Hey. hey. <laughs> and of course, my household will be open source, as is. <laughs> uh, should it be? Pretty sure it's gonna be a Unix household because girlfriend likes uh, OS X. I have to change that. It's not a deal breaker with me. So yeah, no, no, no. It's just you know, as is your girlfriend, right? Yeah, she uses a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's just that like um, OS X. It just sounds weird. Like my girlfriend likes OS X. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. A Unix-based bastardization. <laughs> Let's just say it as it is. An inferior operating system. <laughs> <laughs> Starts with an A, ends with pull. <laughs> it's a fruit. A blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> That's still a lot. Is it an actual fruit? Is it an actual, there's an actual blackberry? Yeah. It, yes, there is an actual blackberry. I haven't tasted. Me neither. <laughs> you, you only... The closer we get to... The closest we get to something similar is frozen blueberries found in certain places. And that's similar, not the same. 